Several years ago, David Templeton, who was a blind pig in the acorn reader, found a letter in an old house when he was out fishing one day. And this is what he told me about finding the letter. I was fishing along a mountain creek over in Lee County, Virginia. There was a gravel road that ran along the high bank just above the creek. Lost in the thickets and honeysuckle, still hanging onto the banks of the road, but falling down eventually into the creek was the ghost of an old house. Its roof was mostly caved in, but the floors were somewhat still intact so I could get into it. Some of the old linoleum was still in place and some patches of wallpaper clung to the walls. Even a piece of furniture or a cabinet waited for someone from long ago to come back and take it with them. I looked in a kitchen cabinet and found an old letter still in the envelope someone had licked and mailed and someone had happily opened one December many years ago, but time worn so the sender's address couldn't be seen. One end was torn off and two or three pages of still folded writing poked out. I read the letter and you know, I could feel the frail little woman standing there reading the Christmas thoughts her dear sister had sent. And I could look around the now dilapidated remains of a once warm home and imagine the little woman's smiles from another time as she put wallpaper on the cabin's walls or when they brought the roll of linoleum she had gone to Jonesville and picked out at the furniture store. And I could imagine a time when she had children there and the school bus was coming and she hurried them off and then sat at her kitchen table and wrote back to her sister. And when I read the letter today, as I sometimes do, I can feel the poignancy as she and her sister pine to see each other during that bleak midwinter's day. Weren't letters so much more meaningful when they were handwritten, just as the writer felt and just like the writer talked, without the adulteration of spell check and grammar check and fancy printed fonts. Anyway, that's how I found the letter in an old fallen down cabin in Virginia, written many years ago at Christmas time. Monday morning, December 10th, 1962, Herndon, Virginia. Dearest sister and family, just a few lines let you know I'm still living and as well as could be expected at my age. Never feel good anymore. Hope this will find the whole family well and happy. Well, sister Ronald had his operation. Got over it fine. Seems to be in better health now. Is looking good. Elsie don't never feel well, looks bad. They both are working. Elsie has been working six days to the week. Ron puts in lots of overtime. That way it goes at this time of year. Well, sister, we had pretty fall, but it's sitting to snow about a week ago. The ground was warm. If it hadn't been, we would have had us a big one and about two inches laid on. Still some on ground, and cold was ten above this morn. I look for us to have a rough winter. That is what they are predicting. I dread it. Well, I had to go to Stella's a week ago, stay with Newland, the children, while Stella was in hospital. Her doctor put her in to have tests run on her. He thought had what Anna Sue had, but thank God she didn't. It was thyroid and nervous condition. They are treating her. I hope she don't have to have an operation. Seems like some of my family is always sick. I told them all I wanted for Christmas was all the family to be well. Would be the best thing in the world. I've went through so much. Sister, how is all your family? I'm just sending you a card and a letter. I haven't got to do no Christmas shopping. The way they work, I don't have no way to go. So don't you send me nothing but a letter about yourself, the whole family. I would like that better than anything. I think about you all and wonder how you are. Sister, I would love to spend Christmas with you better than anything, but at this time of year would be dangerous to travel and make a change. So I will do like the groundhog, hole up to warm weather, but will be always thinking of my loved ones, wishing I could be with them. Well, sister, Ronald and Elsie bought them a house and one acre land. We have moved. I like it fine. We have water in the house. I don't have to pack it like I did. Don't have to be out for nothing but to go to the mailbox. The house has living room, two bedrooms, kitchen, dining room, bathroom, porch, large basement. We wash down there. Is room upstairs to make two bedrooms if they want to. Is stairway up there. We keep all our junk up there. Hang our clothes to dry up there. 
We have oil heat cooked with gas. The house is white and outside trimmed in blue. Have a big lawn, plenty of shrubbery. The lawn borders a highway. The best thing we have land, enough to raise all the vegetables we want. There is three big pine trees in the yard, two grapevines, lots of rose bushes. They paid one third down, pay the rest to pay in rent till they pay for it. Well, sister, I'm going to wash today, so I will sign off here. Tell Frank and Homer hello and not to do nothing that I wouldn't. And dear sister, write me a letter for Christmas gift. I would like that better than anything. Take care of yourself and be careful. If it gets icy and snows down there, if you was to fall, break a bone would be hard to heal at your age. Wishing every one of you health, happiness, and success in all your undertaking. May the good Lord take care of you all and keep you until we meet again is my prayer. Love always, your only sis, Emma. Bye-bye now. XO, XO, XO.